Hello, my fellow open API ins. Your company has chosen to assign you to a project that's making use of the open API specification to help build its HTTP RESTful API. Well, congratulations to you. That is a great choice. I'm eager to ask, how will said project approach the open API specification? Will it use it in a matter that there is already a code base to your disposal and that the code base will generate the open API document on which you, someone building a RESTful HTTP API, consumer of that RESTful HTTP API provider, will use it as your source of documentation? Or do you have the ability to be a co-author of the open API document? Can you analyze what data your consumer requires and can transmit? And can you tailor the provider to your requirements? In my 10 years of being a front-end developer, I just recently, about two-ish years ago, discovered the open API specification. But in those two years, not only my, but also the people I work with's workflow changed radically. With projects more and more being split up in their own fields of specialty, Think headless system where the classic paradigm of the front end and back end is split up into separate code bases that are interdependent. The open API specification is something fundamental for a good developer experience, increased iteration speed, and clarity of communication throughout the entire project lifecycle. The next 25 ish minutes, I'll be showing you my favorite way to incorporate the open API specification in a front end project. Although the session is purposely aimed towards front-end developers, I am aware that not everyone watching this has the role or ambition to become a front-end developer. But this could be a quick video to convince the people you work with in a front-end role, in your team, or in your, or in your company, to take a look into the open API specification. And I can tell you from experience, they will very much reap the benefits of it. Well, are you ready? Then let's go. My name is Martin. I am a senior front end developer at IO, a pan European end to end partner equipped with in depth expertise in strategy, content and creation, marketing and technology to help organizations stay ahead of the pact. Next to sprinkling on some front-end magic on those large end-to-end -end projects, I'm also advocating for the open source community within IO, creating awareness around the fundamental importance of open source software in our current day digital society. At the campus Eindhoven, I started advocating the open API specification around two years ago. Our usage was very limited to just using the open API as a tool for documentation. When I discovered the open API community brought a huge amount of tooling to the table, I set up my roadshow and visited all of our development departments, software and solution architects and technical directors. Through this effort, we've managed to align visions and workflows and use the open API spec to its fullest potential. Let me give you a quick history lesson. Until a few years ago, we've typically made web applications in a monolith setup where the backend is tightly coupled with the frontend. This means that backend languages and frontend languages sometimes were very much interwoven or that the project build automation had to be aware of both the most optimal frontend and optimal backend build solution. That was not the most ideal developer experience for most of us. We at IO, we believe that every developer should be able to specialize in their chosen domain of expertise. Backend developers are owners of the backend code and same goes for the frontend developers. One way to approach this is actually by splitting up the code base in what is known as a headless system. Two code bases that talk to each other to provide one solution where business logic is separated from the view logic. Taking this one step further, we now have a part of the project that can provide data to multiple consumers. Think of providing data towards a range of native mobile apps or exposing data to other cloud services. Now that we've separated our teams into their own fields of expertise, how does each consumer know how to communicate with the provider? Via artisanally typed documentation? Ain't got the time for that. A GraphQL schema, maybe. You could do that, but unfortunately, we're at the wrong talk for that one. Slack, Jira, email, post this on a wireboard. Nope, 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 not gonna do that. 
we are going to use an open API document. Yes, that's what we're going to do. We are going to harness the power of the open API specification and create a single source of truth that is shared with each consumer so that every party knows what and how data goes in, back out, or vice versa. So what is this open API specification? I'm aware that most of you watching already know what this is, but remember, we're here to convince your colleagues who might not know what it is. The open API is what the screenshot here says, but too long, no time. Uh, basically, it's a JSON or JAML file which describes the way the data can go in and out of an HTTP RESTful API provider and how the data is formatted. This file is formatted in a specific kind of way, hence the word specification. So not only humans can read it, but also you reliably can build stuff upon it. Professional developer explanation right there, isn't it? So what does it look like? An open API document contains all of the necessary information of a RESTful API provider. What version it has, what servers it's available on, what paths or endpoints you can talk to, what reusable pieces of data or components it has, what security mechanisms are in place, and much more. There are two major parts in an open API document. First, paths, where operations are declared, the URLs and HTTP methods of endpoints, what parameters or body data and what type of parameters it can consume, what responses can be expected, and what kind of data will come out of those responses. And second, components, where reusable declarations of the data are declared. If you like to know all the features of an open API document, go check out the documentation at their Git repository, to which I've made a short link to at spec.learnopenapi.com. We at IO ourselves are mainly using two approaches with open API documents. First off, a code first approach, where the provider's code base will create or generate an open API document from the existing endpoints, types, interfaces, DTOs, and so on. Each time the code base is updated, the open API document will also be updated. This approach is quite easy to set up if you're using one of the more popular MVC-like frameworks that has plugins to generate this for you. For example, if you're using the Java-based Spring framework, you can extend it with spring.openapi. .NET has the Swashbuckle or NSWAG extension, and the Node.js-based Nest.js framework can be extended with the Nest.js Swagger extension. Secondly, you can go the design-first approach, where we take the open API document and treat it as the single source of truth on which every dependent piece is created afterwards. And this way, every dependent can collaborate on what the contract should state without knowing each other's programming language or paradigm. Either approach you choose, workflows using the open API will be fiercely sped up by the tooling ecosystem that has evolved around it. Because the open API specification is a well-defined and maintained specification, just like HTML or JavaScript, tooling can be reliably built upon it. And in most cases, it has already reached maturity. The most well-known product of an open API document is the documentation website. Not every stakeholder in the team might have the knowledge of how to read JSON or JAML or how to interpret the way it has been marked up according to the spec. We can transform the technical document to a more visually appealing layout, incorporate interactivity so our document's user experience can be improved and can have a broader reach. I can assume that most of us here know the colorful Swagger UI UI. There is also Redoc to your disposal and Stoplight elements, each with its own unique style and set of features. Next up, linting. We want to have some quality assurance on our open API documents. We want some sort of validation that everyone is using the correct format that we've decided on at the start of the project. Tools like Spectral from Stoplight will reduce the decision-making. We'll decide on what format we'll use at the start of the project, and from then on, no discussions anymore. And it will create consistency throughout the entire project. Then. There is a possibility of generating the entire communication layer of your application via code generation or SDK generation, as we like to call it. 
We can map the description of the RESTful HTTP API directly to the programming language of our choice and create functions, methods, interfaces, DTOs, types, and all sorts of other language-specific parts that both providers and consumers can easily integrate in their code base. For instance, maybe the provider is built in Java. Well, let's build a Java-compatible SDK to which we can link the provider's business logic with. Maybe there is the need to support mobile native clients on both iOS and Android. Well, let's build a Kotlin and Swift SDK respectively. Web applications might want a TypeScript-based SDK and integrating cloud services, maybe a Node.js, Go or c -sharp SDK, or any kind of other language. We can even go one step further and make our open API document the base on which we generate a GraphQL schema or even an entire GraphQL server that can be the base or middleman for a transformations from a RESTful HTTP API to a GraphQL API. There are hundreds of generators out there. I suggest you take a look at openapis.tools which next to generators also lists up a bunch of other open API tooling. Open API generator .tech is another big project that can generate SDKs in multiple programming languages. And for front end purposes, I personally like to use open API TypeScript Cogen by Freddy Komen. If we can generate the communication layer, can't we then also generate a development server, which spits out Fake data? We sure can. Enter Prism by our good friends at Stoplight. This CLI tool will take your open API document and spin up a fully fledged mocking server with request validation and correctly formatted response data included. As I hope you can see here, I've taken a snippet of code from an open API document describing an operation that will fetch a list of pets from the provider. In the response, we expect an array of objects that will contain both an integer value ID and a string value name. The only thing we have to do now is spin up Prism via our CLI, make the request to a local server, and boom, the declared format with filled stateless mocked data. If we use our open API specification as our single source of truth and place it in a version control system like Git and build continuous integration around it, we can automate our open API workflows. For instance, we can automatically update and deploy documentation, generate new SDK versions, and update the mock data that we're developing with on each Git commit or release. This allows us to iterate much faster than before. I'm willing to make the bold statement that the open API automation has cut development time of my last project on which I was working on for the last six months by at least a third. Let's talk code. I'm going to give you a quick overview of how you can integrate an open API workflow in a front-end project. All examples are freely available on GitHub. I'll share the links in the show notes, in the descriptions, on in the chat, um, and they're on my website, mrtnvh.com slash talks. Here, we can hopefully see a monorepo style of front-end framework setup where I chose to split up the actual front-end application, the generated SDK, the open API document itself, and mocking server into separate packages. A monorepo is a way to create separate code bases with internal interdependencies. For instance, our front-end relies on the SDK, and the SDK has the open APIs package as a dependency. First off, we have our open API package. In this package, our open API document is maintained. It has the help of Stoplight's Spectral that lins and validates the document on its format and makes sure that everyone collaborating will adhere to the agreed format. If we run the linting command, we can see our current version of the open API document is using an incorrect casing in declaring an operation. Let's change that and run our lint command once more. Et voila, our open API document is now valid. Here we are using Stoplight's elements, which is wrapped in a web component to build a documentation website. If we run the development command, we'll start an HTTP server in our root folder to which we can navigate and see our documentation. 
Our SDK package contains nothing except our build commands and configuration. The TypeScript source code will be generated and compiled to JavaScript with type definitions afterwards. Our mocking server package contains a command that will start up Stoplight's Prism mocking server on port 4010. And our front-end package contains a small web application built on feet with some JavaScript in which we discover that we will try to fetch a list of pets and see the results put into an element. Thanks to the monorepo setup and tooling, I automated the initialization of each separate package in one single command, npm run dev. When I run this command in the root, all sorts of things ha will happen. The SDK will build, the mocking server will spin itself up on port 4010, and the front end will be served on port 3000. If we then visit the front end, we're likely to see a mocked response on our screen. Bravo, you did it. Congratulations. To quote one of Belgium's most famous TV chefs, so what did we learn today? The open API specification is a contract between services that gives us a unified way of de describing a RESTful HTTP API. We can take a code-first approach with the open API specification where the existing code base acts as a single source of truth or a design-first approach where the document acts as the single source of truth. We have tools like document generation, SDK generation, mocking servers, linting, and all that with the help of automation to greatly improve our workflow. So what are the results? We have now a single source of truth, a place where every developer knows where to look for the communication between providers and consumers. We have a sped up workflow. We can iterate so much faster and we create more independence for separate teams. So that's it for me. Thank you for watching me ramble about OpenAPI. If you have any questions, put them in the chat or in the comments. Contact me on one of my online channels. Links are available on my website, mrtnvh.com. If you're keen on collaborating on a project with me or are looking to work on projects with open APIs with me, check out iodigital.com, leave a message in the contact form on the bottom and tell Martin van Hoof from Campus Eindhoven sent you. I hope you learned something today and that you might use one of the tips in here in your next project. If so, let me know. It always lightens up my day when I've been able to help someone along. Thank you to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak. My name is Martin, and I wish you all a very pleasant day. Bye-bye. Well, hello, there. Check, check. Am I on screen? Is this thing working? Ah, you're on. Woohoo! Okay. As you can see, I had uh, unfortunately had to tear down the beautiful Christmas lights uh, um, behind me. So um, yeah, thank you for watching. Um, I'm gonna uh, give some answers to some questions. So um, um, thank you, Derek, for that uh, good question about integration tests. Um, well, we try to, it's it, mocking server, and, and that's a question that I've been uh, getting a lot lately. It's, it's hard to get that mocking server uh, to do stateful things like, uh, a certain piece of data goes in and we need to get this a required a, 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 a um, I mean uh, the same response back just for our integration tests uh, for example um, what we do is we take the mocking server as a basis so uh, it talk it, it takes the open API specification in uh, document I mean um, it spits out a random response. And um, well, if we need to have certain uh, certainties for our integration tests, well, we um, well we 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 um, how should I say it? Um, we cater. We we 
uh, customize the the response that's coming back. So we make sure that we're getting the same response back um, each time. So that's a little bit of manual work you have to do there. Uh, the mocking server is great for starting out. So um, get the mocking server up and running with the open API document you have there. Um, start creating requests, check if everything uh, comes in and out um, uh, correctly in your front end uh, and build from there. Uh, it's still way faster to use a mocking server, an automatic mocking server like, like Prism, than starting out uh, building your own uh, custom uh, mocking server in, in your project. So thank you, thank you for that question. Um, also, thank you, Patrick, for your questions. Uh, um, are there any other questions? Just put them in the chat or in the Q&A. Let's let me click to the Q&A and uh, put them in the chat. Um, so maybe it's 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 um, nice for me to 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 share some some questions I already have had from uh, from my colleagues in the, our front end uh, chapter. Um, one other thing um, we're we're working on or that we see is that the SDK generation. The, the automatic SDK generation is kind of hard because the open API specification, it has so much detail and it's hard for a project, in an open source project that is not really funded or where the maintainer does it in its free time, um, that it has all those features available. So it's a problem that we see at our company and we're trying to allocate resources to give back and, and, and improve those generators. Um, there's a few big projects, like I said, uh, the OpenAPI generator.tech. Um, the thing we notice there is that the barrier of entry is pretty high because it's a Java-based application which uh, transforms the OpenAPI documents uh, into SDKs using templates, um, and the the, the 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 extending or contributing uh, to the tests suite there uh, uh, is yeah high high level of uh, uh, high a high level high barrier of entry. <laughs> Apologies for my poor English. <laughs> um, so. I hope I've um, I created a, a good enough talk for for people who are not aware of the Open API specification, mostly front enders, that they can uh, take it and, and 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 say, "Oh, this is wonderful! I need to include this in my project." And bam, they they got up and running. Um, another question from uh, Patrick: uh, How do you manage the Open API spec changes from back end, front end st stakeholders? Etc. So we have um, in the demo. I had a um, an open API uh, subfolder. Um, we could treat it as a Git sub module if you're familiar with that. Um, so it's a shared um, repository that's as that's in the front end project as it is in the back end project, or maybe the back end and front end live in the same mono repo where are separate projects. Um, the thing is, we we we, we um, maintain it as a single separate project. Uh, we have linting; uh, our documentation is in there. Uh, Swagger UI or our elements are in there, and uh, we work on that document. And when um, a new version or updates happen, they are versioned automatically through Git commits. So. Um, we have meetings and we talk and we discuss uh, changes in the open API um, uh, document. And um, we commit them and we pull them in our separate projects. And then we update our SDKs. If we have typing in our SDKs, um, things might break. We see that at, com at our uh, uh, 
build time uh, our integration tests might break because there are changes um, so as soon as someone pushes or as the project updates the, the git sub module um, yeah we, we we see if everything still works I hope that answered your, que your question. Ah, uh, okay. Wonderful, wonderful. So yeah, we we still have I think five minutes left on the clock. A little less than five minutes. If anybody has uh, any other questions about how uh, they can use uh, Open API in front end projects, um, yeah, just put them in the chat. Um, I've noticed that the, uh, the the change to OpenAPI uh, from a front end perspective was uh, a, a quite um, uh, how should I say it in, in English? Um, it had its impact when I started and 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 I discovered the OpenAPI specification that we used it as a documentation. So we read it, uh, oh, this URL, these HTTP methods. And now that we got all the automation in place, we really, really, really sped up our projects. And if we're using RESTful API projects, um, if we start up or, or, or integrate with other RESTful API projects, we always try to get that open API doc in place so that we can generate SDKs, we can uh, use a mocking server to get up uh, as, as, as uh, quickly as possible, um, and it's really proven its worth. So uh, I think a last question from Manish. Uh, hope I said it, pronounced it right. Is there any way to write front-end routes also in OpenAPI specification? Will that help in understanding the front-end routes as well? I try to keep those separately. Um, you have you have to um, if it's CRUD, the, your basic CRUD. Mm, it's it's you could do that with your HTTP methods. Um, mostly, we discovered that um, the data that we get in pages my, pages might have several pieces of data, or uh, have several actions. Uh, then it's getting quite hard to maintain those front end routes and those um, API open API uh, URLs, those endpoints. Um, also, um, the open API is a contract between consumers and providers. So it's not that, uh, only the front end relies on it to get its data and to send its data, but also the back end. um, it's a contract that states, uh, with what the back end should do. So, um, maybe there's another paradigm in that, in the back end code, I would not. Uh, recommend it if it's too complex of a project. If it's, I think it could be possible with uh, your standard CRUD routes, um, but I haven't tried. I don't have any experience with that. If you do, put it in the chat. <laughs> well, thank you for your question, Manish. So I think there's less than two minutes, less than one minute on the clock. I'm going to say goodbye now. Um, thank you very much for uh, for joining us today. Um, if you have um, any remarks, any questions still, check out the socials, check out the website, contact me. I'd love to talk to you, help you out. Um, and with that, enjoy the other speakers and goodbye. <laughs>